Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you've built or bought a PC within the last few years then you're probably familiar with quad core CPUs, six core CPUs and maybe dual core CPUs. The thing is back in the day we had even more options to choose from such as triple core processors like the X3425 from AMD here. Now these chips were interesting because they bridged the gap between dual core CPUs, which people were questioning the longevity of, and quad core processors, which were slightly more expensive. They were also a great way for AMD to sell off some of the chips that didn't quite cut it as fully fledged four core processors. That was maybe because the fourth core was unstable or perhaps defective. Correct me if I'm wrong there, but that's what I believe was the case. Now a lot of these triple core CPUs like the Athlon X3425 here had a little secret and that is what we're going to be looking into today. Now thanks to an individual by the name of Craig who sent this motherboard for this video making the whole thing possible. So if you purchased a triple core CPU like this one then you would have had the ability to unlock it perhaps activating the fourth unstable core. This would turn it into a completely different processor, one that you just couldn't buy off the shelf. So you could own this CPU, but you couldn't buy it. The thing is, this core was disabled for a reason, like on a lot of these triple core CPUs. And as I found out over this weekend, just because I make YouTube videos, it doesn't mean things are going to go smoothly. So let's get into it a little more and talk about this chip. Now, before we start messing around with the unlocking, I want to talk about what it's like to use an old triple core Athlon in 2023. The X3425 is surprisingly acceptable for browsing the web and doing day-to-day -day tasks, even with Windows 10 installed. It scores pretty badly in Cinebench and rendering a 30 second 1080p 60fps video took over four minutes. Basic stuff, yeah, it's fine, but anything more, and it'll get quite frustrating. I paired it with 16 gigs of 1600 MHz dual channel DDR3 today, which definitely helped and Windows was installed fresh on an SSD. When it comes to gaming, it is lacking certain instruction sets, so you'll find that most modern titles will not run. Some of my favourites, including Counter-Strike 2, Elden Ring and Starfield just would not stop. Some offered a warning and some just crashed immediately. Now the games that did work, well the experience was a stuttery one. I spent my Sunday playing GTA 4, GTA 5, Skyrim Special Edition and The Witcher 3, and while these all worked, it was far from smooth sailing. Also, I'd ignore the temperature reading on screen if I were you. I'm using a beefy Noctua cooler, but I still don't think these numbers are correct. Even in games where the average frame rate may have been close to 30, there were way too many drops and stutters to enjoy anything as represented by the percentile lows. The lower these numbers are, the worse the consistency of a game is. I think the best experience was probably Skyrim Special Edition, whereas the worst had to be GTA 5. Now in GTA 5, not only were the frame times bad, but a lot of the textures were actually missing. Now the more I played, the more of San Andreas just disappeared before my eyes. The GTX 980 I was using was just begging for more. I mean, that itself is a pretty old card, but it was being severely underutilized across the board. Now comes the unlocking. There are plenty of AMD CPUs that allow this, and all it takes is a quick Google search to see which ones are actually capable of this trick. And it's not just triple core chips either. Maybe we'll see how lucky I get with another one in the future because unlocking the Athlon 2X3425 here wasn't exactly a complete success. Far from it. So on the surface this looks like a pretty standard BIOS. We have some overclocking options and as always we can see our CPU specs. Upon restarting though we get an option to press 4 which should unlock this triple core CPU's disabled core. It really is that simple, at least on paper. 
Doing this and getting back into the BIOS revealed that the Athlon X3425 was now a Phenom X4 B25. This is a CPU that you can't buy on its own. It is only accessible via unlocking. Not only did we gain a core, but we seem to have gained 6 megabytes of L3 cache, which was non-existent before. The thing is, I just couldn't get into Windows, not without bumping up the voltage from 1.425, which is already a pretty high operational figure, up to 1.5. Usually a voltage increase like this would be reserved for a serious overclocking attempt, but I needed this just to get into the OS, and oh boy, it really wasn't stable. It's clear why this one left the factory as a 3 core and not a 4 core. My new to me Phenom B25 was so unstable that it couldn't even make it through a Cinebench test. That said, it did complete a 30 second video render. The improvement was significant. What had taken over 4 minutes now took just 3.5. Now this was still a painfully long time, especially for a 30 second video render, but it was far less painful. We've gone from a wasp sting to a bee sting. Of course, the games that wouldn't run before still didn't run because we don't gain any instruction sets, but those that did saw some improvements, especially with the percentile lows, which reflected more consistent gameplay. Apart from Skyrim, which just blue screened the entire computer, I had to turn it off at the wall just to be able to restart, so this wasn't good. At one point, I thought I'd fried the CPU due to the increased voltage. Everything else though, well, this CPU is still pretty ancient, so I'm probably being a bit generous with the term playable, but the improvements were definitely there. GTA 5 now had all of its roads and textures, even if it did still grind to a bit of a PowerPoint presentation in busier areas. My experiences with its predecessor, GTA 4, as well as The Witcher, were also better, though I'm convinced that we're still not seeing the numbers we should be. I think this CPU is just so unstable right now, it's barely hanging on, but it's definitely been fun messing around with this thing. Unlocking AMD's hidden CPUs is still worth trying, no matter the model number, because you never know how performance will change. It won't always work, I mean these cores, as I said, were disabled for a reason, and that reason could be anything, but I always really like stuff like this, and it's a bit of a shame we don't see sort of more easter eggs I guess with hardware these days. That said, if you enjoyed this one, please do leave a like on it down below, leave a dislike if you didn't, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. If you have anything to send me that you'd like me to take a look at on the channel then please get in touch at my email address or on X or Instagram, wherever, and uh, I'd be happy to provide you with the address to send stuff to. Thanks again to Craig for providing the motherboard for this video. All that's left to say then is thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see all of you in the next video.